Hi guys, so in today's video we're going to be talking about four operations. And so, so we make computations or calculations using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But then we need to talk about the order in which we do these. So first of all, when we have addition and subtraction, um, then some important notes to consider are that when we have two numbers, A and B, and we add them together, when we're doing addition, the order doesn't matter. So what that means is a plus b is equal to b plus a. And so, for example, if we have 1 plus 2, the answer is going to be the same as 2 plus 1 because they're all going to be equal to 3. Now, when we have parentheses, for example, if we have a plus parentheses b minus c, if we have a positive sign in front of the parentheses, we're basically distributing the positive sign, which makes no difference in the sign. And so what that means is that um, a plus parentheses b minus c is just going to be a plus b minus c. So you can see that there has been no change to the sign inside the parentheses. But what happens when there's a negative sign in front of the, in front of the parentheses? Well, we have if we have a minus b plus c, then whenever we have a negative sign in front of the parentheses, we distribute the negative sign. And so that makes this become a minus b minus c. And then last but not least, when we have a, when we have a negative sign in front of the parentheses, but then we have a negative sign inside the parentheses, we distribute the negative sign. And so for b, it becomes negative b, but then inside the parentheses, the c was already negative c, and we're distributing another negative. So a double, a double negative, so negative negative c, is going to become a positive c. So since we have a double negative, this is going to be a minus b plus c. And so especially when we have a negative sign in front of it, the parentheses makes a large difference. Now when we do multiplication and division, when we have a times parentheses b plus c, similar to the positive and negative signs, we're distributing the number that's being multiplied. And so we're distributing the a, so it's going to be ab plus ac. And then similarly, for negatives, we're also distributing the a that's multiplied to both, so it's going to be ab minus ac. Now when we have parentheses and divide it by c, again, we can think of it as distributing the division. So we're dividing both factors inside, or both numbers inside the parentheses by c. So a plus b divided by c is going to equal to a over c plus b over c. Same thing happens for when there's a negative sign inside the parentheses. It's going to be a over c minus b over c. Now when we have a divided by b times c, the order of operations would not matter because multiplication and division are of the same degree, of the same importance, and so I would just recommend following it in order from left to right. So we have a c over b. And that is going to be the same as a times c over b, right? They both give us a c over b. So you can start with this or either start with this. And if we have a divided by b divided by c, it's going to become a divided by b times c. So let me tell you what this means because it might be a little confusing. So we have a divided by b, but then we divided that by c again. And so, thinking of this as one large fraction, where this is one term and this is another, we know that c is equal to c over 1, because any number, like 5, is equal to 5 over 1. And so when we have that, um, a trick to do um, such, di such divisions is we take the inner two and multiply them, and that's going to be the denominator. 
and we take the outer two and multiply them. That's going to be the numerator. And so now this is equal to a divided by bc. And also it's important to know the multiplication of numbers that will give you an answer of 100 or 1000 just so that you can get your calculations really quickly. So we should memorize that 8 times 125 is equal to 1,000. And 4 times 25 is equal to 100. Now we'll move on to practicing addition and subtracting. So for the first example, we have 846 plus 78 minus 46. Now we're going to do the addition first and then go with the subtraction in order. So we have 846 plus 78 minus 46. Of course, I'm following an order is going to work at all times, but we want to find easy ways to do the subtraction without having to complicate much of the addition or subtraction. And so since we have positive and negative only, I mean, since we have a plus and addition and subtraction only, we can rearrange in order that we want. And looking at 846 and 46, we see that the tens place and ones place overlap, so it's going to be really easy to subtract those two. So we're going to rearrange it to 846 minus 46 plus 78, and this is just going to automatically give us 800. So we have 878, which is going to equal to 878. Now in a similar manner, we have 365 plus 276 plus 135 plus 724. Of course, we can add all of them in order, but since we have addition only, we know that based on A plus B equals B plus A, the order of addition doesn't matter. And so we're going to look for ways to group two of these we're going to look for ways to group numbers so that it's easy to add them together. And since we see um, two numbers that end with 5, we know that when the ending five, two ends are 5 and they're added together, the last digit is going to equal to 0, which is oftentimes really easy to work with. So when we add those together, it's going to become 500. And then we have a number that ends with the 6 and a number that ends with the 4. Again, that equals to an ending of 0. So when we add those together, we get 1,000. And it's really easy to add 1,000 and 500 together. And that is going to give us an answer of 1,500. Then we have a similar type of problem. So again, we're going to try to look for ways to group those two to get group numbers together. Again, ending with five, so we're going to add those together. And that would give us 1,000. And ending with six and four, so we're going to add them together. And that would give us five, 400. And so 1,000 plus 400 would give us 1,400. Um, now we're solving a similar type of problem, but we now have an, so we now have a subtraction involved. But again, it's addition and subtraction only, so we can rearrange to make our calculations easier. We see one, we see two numbers with the same ending, and one is a negative sign and one is a positive sign. So when we subtract those together, that would likely give us a number that ends with a zero, and that would be equal to six hundred. And we have two numbers, each ending with 4 and 6, so we add them together, and that gives us 100. So we're now going to add the total sums together to get 700. And it's also important to always keep the sign as it is when you're rearranging. For problem, for example, E, both numbers end in 8 and 2. So when we add those together, we would get 2,100. Then for numbers like 39, 399, and 3,999, of course we can add them in order. 
but that would be complicated because we have nines at the end. So what we can do is we can think of 39 as 40 minus 1. 399 is 400 minus 1, and 3999 is 4000 minus 1. And when we add those together, it's going to be 4440 minus 3, which is going to give us 4437. And, our, and we have our second example that uses parentheses. And so again, um, what we can do is we can solve the parentheses first. So we can do 186 plus 327, and then subtract that from 527. But instead of doing that, what we can also do is distribute the negative sign. So to distribute the negative sign, we can do 527 minus 186 minus 327. And so now we have 527 minus 327, which both end with the 7. So we can rearrange this into this order. And so that's going to give us 200 minus 186, which will easily give us 14. Then for B, we have a negative distribution for a parenthesis that involves a negative sign. So that is going to become 565 minus 388, then we have a double negative, which becomes a positive. And so again, ending with the 5, so we add those together. And that is going to give us 700 minus 388, which is relatively easier and gives us 312. We'll get some more problems. So again, we have distribution of a negative sign. So we have 896 minus 132 minus 596. Again, we're going to do these two together because they both end in 6. So that gives us 300 minus 132, which gives us 168. Then when we distribute, we get 732 minus 286 minus 332. So these two numbers both end in 2, so we're going to do those two first. And so we're going to get 400 minus 286, which gives us 114. Then when we distribute this, this is going to be 633 minus 233 plus 189. And so if we subtract these two because they both end in 3, it's going to give us 400 plus 189, which gives us 589. Then we have our last um, example for this type of problem. So we have 534 minus 234 minus 123 after the distribution. So we can do these two first because they both end in 4, so that gives us 177. Next it says compute the following. So we have a long list, and it seems impossible for us to add all of those constantly and subtract, uh, constantly add and subtract. But an easy way to do this is we can group these into two numbers. So 100 minus 99 is equal to 1. 98 minus 97 is equal to 1. 96 minus 95 is equal to 1. And so since we have 100 numbers and each group involves two numbers, we know that that will give us 50 groups that are equal to 1. So we're going to do 50 times 1, which is equal to 50. For the next example, um, we have numbers that end with 9. And so if we add 1 to each, that's going to be 20 minus 1 plus 200 minus 1 plus 2,000 minus 1, plus 20,000 minus 1. And so we can think of that as 2,220, 20,000, 22,220 minus 4. And that would easily give us 22,216. Now we're going to look at some problems for multiplication and division. 
So, um, we have 65 times 399. Of course, we can do that um, vertically. But another way to do this is, again, think of 399 as 400 minus 1. And so that is going to basically be 65 times 400 minus 65, which would be much easier. Um, for B, we have 25 times 16 times 125, and we can break down 16 into smaller numbers like 2 times 8. So what, the, what that can help us do is, because we know that 8 times 125 is equal to 1,000, we're basically doing 25 times 2 times 1,000, which is equal to 50 times 1,000, so that would be 50,000. Or another way to approach this is we can break 16 down into 4 times 4, and so we have 25 times 4 times 4 times 125, and we know that 25 times 4 is equal to 100. So 100 times 4 times 125 is going to be 500, so that would also give us 50,000. Now all of these other examples are also of a similar type where we can make 198 into 200 minus 2, 200 minus 2, and express 32 as a, as a product of 4 and 8 to use identities, to use um, things that we memorize like 8 times 125 is 1,000 and 25 times 4 is 100. Again, if we, if we have numbers like 99, we can express that as 100 minus 1 and distribute. And so we're just going to move on to solving more problems since all of these examples are really similar. Now we'll go over two examples from each type. So for example, um, here we have 37 times 88 plus 37 times 12. And so we can see that 37 is being repeated twice. So we have one, multi one multiplication plus another multiplication. And so in that case, we can take the 37 out and group it into 88 plus 12, because that is going to be 37 times 88 plus 37 plus 12. And 37 times 88 plus 37 times 12. And so if we do 88 plus 12, that gives us 100. So that is going to be much easier to do work with. Now let's try this example. Again, we see two products, but now we have subtraction. So we're going to group it into 33 and 126 minus 26. And that's going to be 33 times 100, which is 33,000. Then for the next type of example, we have 210 divided by 30. So since we know that 200 divided by 30 is 7, we can do that straight away, but if you guys have, if you guys, um, for this problem, I think it's actually easier to just do 210 divided by 30, but there are instances where um, it's a little hard to do that. So for example, it could be 210 divided by like 15. So it's not really easy for us to know right away that 210 divided by 15 is going to be equal to 14. And so we can distribute the division. So we can do 210 divided by 5, and then divide it by 6. And so that is going to give us 42 divided by 6, which is going to be equal to 7. Now I'll we'll talk about another example. So it says use a simple method to compute the following. So first of all, we can break down 20, 222 into 2 times 111. So what we can do is we can write this as 333 times 2 times 111 divided by 666. And we know that 333 times 2 is equal to 666. So that's going to equal this. So we can do these two first to get an answer of 111. Now, for problem C, we 
we have a really large number, but then we know that since we have two divisions, that's going to equal to um, the large number divided by these two multiplied together. Right, we learned that in the beginning. So it's this operation. And so we know that 9 times 5 is 45. So we're going to divide by 45, which is going to give us this number really easily. So now we'll move on to some practice problems. And so it says compute the following. And so since we know that 56 and 56 are repeated, we're going to rearrange to 456 minus 56 plus 88, which gives us 400 plus 88 which is 488. Now since we have a lot of practice problems, we're only going to solve um, problems that are representative of some techniques or some strategies. And so for B, it's basically a similar strategy where we subtract first and then add. So we're not going to go over B since it's really similar to A. Now for C, um, doing these two operations is really easy because it's going to be minus 1, and so that's going to give us 3,034. Right, so what we did was we first did these two together. And remember that's not in parentheses, so you just can do these together and then keep the negative sign as it is. And then oh um I misread the question I'm sorry for the confusion and so um, for here what we can think of this as I'm sorry for the confusion I misread the question so we have 998 which is basically 1000 minus 2 and when we write like 998 as an expression, we need to place the parentheses around. Again, same thing for 997, 1000 minus 3. And so distributed, that's going to be 3035 minus 1000 plus 2 minus 1000 plus 3. And so that's going to be 3035 minus 2000 plus 5. It's going to be 10,035 plus 5, which is equal to 10,040. Now problem D is also going to be a similar type of problem, so I want you guys to solve this on your own by pausing the video and coming back to it. For problem E, we have 636 minus 567 minus 99 plus 367. So, um, first of all, we can express 99 as 100 minus 1. So we can do 636 minus 567 minus 100 minus 1 plus 367. And that is going to give us this expression. And so we have 636 minus 667 plus 367 plus 1. And so since these two both end in 7, we're going to do those two first. And so that's going to give us 636 minus 300 plus 1, which gives us 336 plus 1, which is equal to 337. Now, um, F is also a similar type of problem. So you just change 997, 998, and 999 into um, something related to 1000. So I want you guys to solve F on your own. And for G, we have 123 plus 456 plus 544. And so, again, the ending 3 and 7 and ending 6 and 4, these two are going to be associated. So 123 plus 877 is going to give us 1,000. And 456 
plus 544 is also going to give us 1,000. And so basically we're doing 1,000 plus 1,000, which gives us 2,000. Now we'll solve um, example A and C together. And I want you guys to solve, since we have a lot of practice problems for these types of videos, um, for these lectures, I want you guys to solve problems that I don't go over in class on your own using the strategies that we learned in class together. So first, we're going to distribute the negative sign. And so we're going to have 2,208 minus 208 minus 139. And doing these two first, it gives us 2,000 minus 139. And 2,000 minus 139 is going to give us 1,861. Now going to C, we're going to distribute the negative sign. So we have 1,306 minus 406 plus 258. And so doing these two first, it's going to give us 900 plus 258, which is equal to 1,158. Now we're going to solve E, G, and I. And so we're going to distribute the negative sign. So we have 644 minus 243 plus 156 plus 143. Now we can do, we can add these two together since it ends with 4 and 6. And we can subtract these two, we can add these two together because um, both end in 3, and 1 is a negative, and 1 is a positive. And so 644 plus 156 is going to give us 800. And negative 243 plus 143 is going to give us negative 100, which is going to give us a total answer of 700. Then we have problem G. So we're going to distribute the negative sign. Again, we have 37, 37, and 85, 85. And so 937 minus 137 is going to be 800. Negative 185 plus 85 is going to be negative 100. So that also gives us 700. Now we're going to look at our next example. Again, we're going to distribute the negative sign. So doing these two first, we get 500 minus 546 plus 344, 346 is going to be negative 200, and so that is going to give us an answer of 300. Now let's move on to our next problem. So I'll be going over problem B. And so all these numbers can be basically expressed as 300 minus 2 plus 3,000 minus 2 plus 30,000 minus 2 plus 300,000 minus 2. And so that is going to be, that's going to be 333,300 minus 8. And that's going to give us 333,292. And so A and C you can also solve on your own using similar strategies. And so I'm going to be going over B. Again, you guys can solve A and C on your own using the same strategy, since these are all similar types of questions. So we we're going to group these into two. So that's 88 minus 87 is 1, 86 minus 85 is 1. And since we have 88 numbers, we're going to have 44 groups, each involving two numbers. And so we're going to do 44 times 1, so our answer is going to be 44. Now I'll be going over problem A. And so again, we can group these into two numbers. 360 minus 357 is going to be 3. 354 minus 351 is going to be 3. And since we're going from 360 to 297, 
we're getting sixty three numbers, and since we have sixty three, so we have sixty three numbers in total involved, and Um, yeah, we have 63 numbers involved, and we're going to group each of them into two numbers. So grouping each of them will give us three, and so that's going to give us 11 groups. So our total answer is going to be 33. And then for, um, we have a lot of practice problems here, and so I'm only going to be going over two because of time, but basically for 1,600 divided by 25, and also for questions that we don't go over in class today, you guys can definitely solve them by looking back at strategies that we learned in the beginning of class. So 1,600 can be expressed as 40 times 40, and then we divide that by 25. And so what that is going to give us is 40 times 40, and 25 can also be broken down into 5 times 5. And so that is going to be um, 40 divided by 5 is going to be 8. And 40 times 5 is going to be 200. Also, instead of, we can't, so I know that some of you guys might think that it's possible to do it like that, just like how we do for addition and subtraction. But actually, that doesn't work in this case. So what we have to do is, um, we can divide by 5, first of all. So if we divide by 5, everything is going to be, so for these 5, it's going to be 8 times 8 divided by 1. And we still have a 5 multiplied to it. And so that's going to be 40. And 40 times 40. We have 40 plus, so we have 40 and then 40 divided by 5. And so that is going to give us 40 times 8. So that's going to give us 320. Now, but in this case, if we get 320, we need to kind of check if 320 times 25 is equal to 1,600. And in this case, it's not. So this is a mistake that many of us make. And so instead of doing this, we want to just do 1,600 divided by 25. So that is a mistake that many people can make. But you can check if you made a mistake or not by multiplying the answer to what you divided by and seeing if you got the large results. So 1,600 divided by 25 is basically going to be 16 times 100 divided by 25. And that's going to be 16 times 4, since we know that 25 times 4 is equal to 100. And so that is going to equal to 64. And we know that 64 times 25 is equal to 1,600. And so um, we're going to solve problem A here. So we have 5,000 divided by 8 divided by 125. So 5,000 is going to be expressed as 5 times 1,000. Divide that by 8 and divide it by 125. So we know that 1,000 divided by 8 is equal to 125. And so we have 5 times 125 divided by 125, which is going to equal to 5 times 1, and that is equal to 5. And other problems in this page are also um, solvable using similar strategies. And so I'll be solving problem E here. So we have three, 
32,000 divided by 125. And 32,000 can be expressed as 320 times 100. Or it can be expressed as 32 times 1,000 divided by 125. And so we know that that is equal to 32 times 8, which is equal to 256. Then we're going to solve question 8. So again, we see that 11 is multiplied for both groups. So we're going to group them into 11 times 89 plus 11, which is going to equal to 8, 11 times 100, which gives us 11,000 as our answer. And so I'm going to be solving problems E and G here. So again here, um, 63 times 6 can be rewritten as It can be written as 63 times 2 times 3 plus 74 times 3. And so in this case, we can group it into 3. So we have 3 times 63 times 2 plus 74. And so that is going to give us 3 times 126 plus 74. And that gives us 3 times 200, which is equal to 600. Now for problem G we can express 8 as 4 times 2, so we're going to write this as 44 times 4 plus 78 times 4 times 2. And so we can group it into 4, so we can do 4 times 44 plus 78 times 2, so that is going to be equal to 4 times 44 plus 156, which is equal to 4 times 200, which is equal to 800. So now we're going to solve question A, and for all other problems you guys can solve on your own because it's using a really similar strategy. So again, we see 35 involved in both groups. So we're going to group it into 35, so it's going to be 35 times 128 minus 28, so it's going to be 35 times 100, which gives us 3,500. And then I'll solve problem A in this page. So we have 3,333 times 3,333 divided by 9,999. And 9,999 can be expressed as 3,333 times 3. And so if we distribute the division, we're going to have... So we're not distributing the division, sorry. So since this is expressed as this, um, I know that when we did addition, we said that we need to do parentheses around, but that's because it was addition and subtraction. In the case of multiplication or division, we can just write that out because it's not going to affect our order of operations. And so this is going to give 1. So we're going to have 3,333 times 1. And um, so sorry for the confusion. Let me just rephrase what I said. So 9,999 is 3,333 times 3. So I'll just rephrase what I said because I said it in a really confusing way. So I apologize for your confusion. So we're going to write this out like so. And so we're going to rewrite this as this. And so this is equal to 1. So we have this, which just gives us 1,111. And so I want you guys to solve um, the rest of the problems on your own by using the strategies that we've discussed so far. And that is it for our video today. Thank you.